Hey friends. So I want to walk us through a couple of papers that show up a lot in my studio and each of them give me the feeling of a fresh start. So I want to talk a little bit about some paper types, some paper choices and why certain types of paper might serve certain painting situations best. So here is an example of something I've done on Strathmore 400. So practice. And there is no point in your artistic journey where you stop practicing. The vast majority of what I do as a professional artist and what every professional artist that I know does is practicing, working things out, doing research, developing visual ideas, having half of an idea that you've worked out ahead of time and putting it aside and then separately working out the other half of the idea later and then synthesizing those halves of an idea. Where do you do that? You do that on your expensive paper. So all of this kind of play and experimentation, not all of it is best done on cellulose paper. Not all of it has to be on cellulose paper. There are times and places where even an experiment requires the surface of a cotton paper. But a lot of my experimentation is experimentation of this type. Here's another example of that. So here I've got a playful little classic watercolory watercolor illustration. And this is exactly the kind of thing that I do when I just want to have some fun and it could wind up digitized on a greeting card. It could wind up digitized as a piece of clip art. It doesn't matter. And it isn't perfect. It is not a technically perfect painting. This got washed away. Now, often people will blame all cellulose paper for all failures of surface integrity in all instances where somebody applies a layer and a layer gets lifted up. In this case, this is definitely me. It is not the paper. I remember getting impatient and this was not 100% dry and it absolutely should have been. Whereas here, I think we're getting some nice paint and water interactions. I think this is exactly the kind of painting that I hear people tell beginners wood pulp paper is not capable of doing. And I disagree with that based on the fact that with decent brushes and with a commitment to developing good brush handling and good water control, there's no reason you cannot make some really nice little paintings on a wood-based paper like Strathmore 400. So here's another thing that I've been doing with this paper, which really is a bit of a stretch for me, and I've been surprised. So I talked about how certain times experimental work will still sort of require a cotton paper. We're doing things with water and paint interaction that are more complex and that really push the limits of what a cellulose paper can give us. Cellulose papers don't give you really smooth washes. Cellulose papers let water sit on top of them and kind of kick the water back and forth so you get hard water lines. So they're often not appropriate for experimenting with large areas of wash and sort of subtle abstract interactions. Well, here are some little outings I did into some severe minimalism. I'm kind of a closet minimalist. I love that aesthetic. And I develop a lot of work for the wall market that has a minimalist feel. And typically I've always done this only on cotton paper, but I wanted to try out a new color palette using a lot of Daniel Smith buff titanium. And because I wasn't too sure about the colors at all, I used the Strathmore 400 that I had. And I'm really pleased with these results. So yes, I get some cauliflowering, but this is exactly the kind of interesting back run that I would want to see 
on cotton paper as well. If I just had these sort of passages of paint with no inconsistencies, no backgrounds, no textures, I wouldn't have much of a painting. So this paper is not inappropriate for this kind of experiment I have found. So that was an interesting and pleasant surprise. And it just makes me like having paper around the studio even more that costs a dollar a sheet. Okay, when I say a sheet, I mean a half imperial sheet. So 15 by 22 inches. I was able to source those for about a dollar each, 25 for 25 bucks at Blick. So this is exactly the price point and the amount of paper that lets me paint in an uninhibited way. The thing I don't like about Strathmore 400 generally is that it's much easier to find these really irritating 12 sheet packs. I can't even get warmed up on 12 sheets. To me, that, that little package of paper, the doling out of tiny amounts of paper is not worth the hassle. But if you can find this in bulk, this is a very serviceable everyday paper. If you cannot, then yes, I like the Canson XL large pads as that consistent workhorse show up and practice daily driver paper that for me is the foundation of a painting practice because the foundation of painting is always about seeing and researching, seeing and investigating. The thesis that we present when we make a really polished, really considered painting on our best cotton paper is just a small percentage of what we paint. And for me, it's just a small percentage of why I paint. So I want to make it clear that I don't equate whimsy or lighthearted subject matter with less than great paper necessarily. So here is an example of a whimsical little kind of, you know, little spot illustrations, little clip art, thumbnail-y kind of illustrations. I did these on 100% cotton cold pressed paper. It is not arch, it is not top shelf, at least not by most people's estimation, but it is my favorite hot pressed paper, and that's the Blick Premier paper. Don't be fooled by the store brand. I really love this paper. I like it better than arch. It is the most consistent surface sizing on a hot press, other than perhaps Windsor Newton, but I haven't used their recent reformulations and I don't trust them based on what I hear. So this paper is a cotton-based paper, and what that means is that I'm able to glaze and glaze and glaze multiple layers on top of each other. So I can start to build up some of these very developed shapes and developed areas of shading. This is a good paper for something like a botanical where you start to use a lot of layers and your brush is fairly dry and your paint management and water management are very precise. So I can put those glazes down and I know that they're smooth and I don't have to worry about the last layer getting lifted up with the subsequent layer. Even the best wood pulp paper can only do so much in the way of that surface absorption that lets us stack glazes on top of glazes. So if this kind of illustration is something that appeals to you, if you're interested in this kind of three-dimensional detailed whimsy, then a cotton cold pressed paper, even if it's not the, the heaviest weight is probably a really good paper for you to focus on using. This painting was painted exclusively with, well, I have a little gouache and a little bit of um, gel pen, but it was painted exclusively with Van Gogh paints. So I want to demonstrate that you can get really nice results with not necessarily top shelf paint, not necessarily top shelf paper, but with very good, solid performers in a value 
category. So a value paint that is still a good paint, still light fast pigments, a value paper that is still 100% cotton. So this is the kind of paper I would use when I'm trying to execute something that looks and feels like this, a little tight, kind of developed, not necessarily the most developed that I'm capable of doing, but something that does not just kind of get layered out in one or two layers and done. I want to show you another side of hot press paper, another personality that it has, which is very different. So often when I think about abstract work and when I think about suggesting papers for students who are interested in using watercolor in a very abstract, fluid, and dynamic kind of way, the first thing that comes to mind is to use hot press paper because it gives us texture. It gives us such a good foothold and handhold onto our surface, and it really lets us build things up. But what I've found is that for a lot of these special effects, a lot of these interactions where we really push things, where we use alcohol, where we use salt, where we're looking for extreme granulation, what I've found is that hot pressed cotton paper actually gives me better, more dynamic, more lively results than cold pressed paper. So it's a little counterintuitive. You think, okay, a lot of water, a lot of interactions, a lot of development, I'm going to reach for my cold pressed. I want texture and I want the ability to build tons of layers. If you reach for hot pressed, where your water sits on that surface just a little bit more, not quite as much as it does on cellulose, but it doesn't sink in the way that it does on a cold pressed surface, that kind of in-between state of having things just a little reluctant to get absorbed, it gives a lot of this dynamic, unpredictable, interesting surface interaction and texture without giving you a lot of back runs and hard water lines and textures that may not be desirable. So is there a type of painting where we need to use Arsh and nothing else will do. I would say that if you want to make a painting in watercolor and spend six months on the same painting, if your subject matter is that complex, if you are doing that level of detail and realism, if you are involved with one single object to that extent, then yes, I would say that Arsh, and I would go for 300 pound paper in that situation. You won't have to worry about stretching. There's no amount of water it can't handle and you will have a great time doing it. If you're that invested, you might as well do that for that particular object. But there's no way that I would make a painting and spend six months on it without having done a ton of preliminary research, some of it possibly, on wood pulp paper, on sketchbooks, on things like that. The type of painting that requires a cotton sheet from start to finish, in my opinion, is this type of painting. So if you are working in an extreme wet in wet way, if you are starting your painting by wetting your sheet end to end, and if every layer that you add, for the most part, has soft edges, if you're looking for these very atmospheric effects, then you're going to need to use cotton because of two factors. One, wood paper will start to pill up and disintegrate from the amount of water that it is required to use to paint something with this kind of characteristic. Number two is that the way we get depth in a painting like this, the way we get this interplay between things that feel a little solid and things that feel completely insubstantial, is that we layer. So I can come in right now with a spray bottle, spray down this entire sheet, 
And the only lifting that I'm going to get as I add more painting, as I add trees or clouds or information, the only lifting I'm going to get is probably minimal and probably in the areas of these dark mass tones. There's no way I could do that on wood pulp. If I did this on Strathmore and I came in and I wet everything down and started painting again, these trees would just lift up into the ether and everything would be a big streaky mess. If that has happened to you, it's not you, it's your paper, nine-tenths of the time. So when you hear people say you must use Arsh 140-pound cotton cold-pressed paper, chances are that the assumption is you want to paint something like this. You want to paint something painterly. You want to paint one painting at a time and really commit to it and dialogue with this one thing and make this sort of grand statement. But I don't think that that is necessarily what we're always trying to do. And I think often that people start to have that relationship to painting a little bit prematurely. I think we fail to spend enough time on the part of our career where we are lab assistants who just kind of get to pipette things into tubes and pay attention for a while, before we get to write up our hypothesis, before we get to publish our paper, we kind of jump into the, I'm gonna put out my hypothesis in my paper stage really prematurely sometimes. And I think as painters, it is really, really good to do research. Now, that said, if this is where your heart is set, if you see this and you're like, this is for me, nothing but this is for me, this is how I wanna paint, then you are going to want to use cotton paper for your research paper as well as your finished product paper. You have a lot to learn about the dynamics of your paint, about how these bleeds work, about how these bleeds don't work. You have a lot to learn about how far you can push it, how much you can scrub, just what you can throw at an image like this before it does start to pill up and disintegrate a little bit. You have a lot of testing to do and a lot of, frankly, torture testing of your paper to do. You should be pushing things too far because only by pushing things too far do you know how to find those sweet spots where they're almost too far, but not quite. And the only way to do that is through experience, and the only experience that really mirrors the kinds of experiences you can expect to find when you're painting like this are experiences that you're going to gain on other types of cotton paper. Arsh and Fabriano both make 90 pound cotton papers. I think that these things are underutilized and I think that that and a board and a roll of tape cuts your costs significantly. And a lot of people are not aware of this option and do not use it. I think that there are great alternative cotton papers. Strathmore makes papers called Imperial and Gemini, which are very serviceable, very good, and somewhat interesting papers that you can use. You can use some interesting handmade papers that are very inexpensive. You can use papers like B paper, which are more budget priced. They have a consistent surface quality, but it is not a bad surface quality by any stretch of the imagination. And the store brands on offer from places like Blick, the store branded Kilimanjaro paper from Cheap Joe's, papers like that can also be a very serviceable alternative to some of their more expensive counterparts. So overall, do I think that everyone should only use Arsh 140 pound cotton paper? No. Clearly, this is not an appropriate solution to every painting problem. As a beginner, your biggest problem is research. As a true beginner, you might look at a painting like this and think, oh, I wanna paint just like that. But you might find that in fact, instead of moving your arm big and wide and making these big gestures, you find it much more satisfying to make flat, 
consistent and beautiful luminous washes. And you might find that in fact, botanicals are your thing. That kind of painting could not be more different from this, but both can be a ton of fun. The only way to know what you really want to do is to try a lot of different things. And when you're trying things on paper that is really painfully expensive, you are adding a level of stress to that investigation. You are adding a level of pressure to your experimentation that frankly will inhibit it. Uninhibited experimentation is the most important part of your job as a beginner. So take into consideration what kind of imagery you want to make, but ultimately make sure that you have plenty of paper that you're comfortable using frequently, using without stress, and using in a way that is experimental, that is not invested in the result, but is having as much fun as possible with every moment of the journey. That is the important job that you have as a beginner painter. And there are lots of options for types of paper that can help you achieve that job splendidly.